Today is the last day of my mission. As the image of Mason Ladner and me appeared on the big screen at the football field, I took out a ring from my pocket and knelt down in front of him. Mason Ladner, I love you. Will you marry me? Perhaps it was rare for a girl to propose in public, countless people around us cheered, say yes to her. Marry her. Amidst the noise, Mason looked at me with a contemptuous gaze. Do you think I'm gonna say yes just because you propose in public? The person I love is not you. I pleaded in a voice that couldn't get any more humble. Mason, it doesn't matter if you lie to me, there are so many people here, all you need to do is say yes to me. The machine cannot discern human emotions. As long as Mason confesses his love for me and says that one word, the mission will be successful. I continued pleading, if you don't say it, I'll die. The outcome of today's failed adventure is that I will be immediately killed by the system. But Mason looked at me for a while and sneered. Well, then let me see you die. My face turned pale in an instant and my breathing became rapid. Mason glanced at me a few times, smiled, and commented. You're quite good at acting. But he didn't know that I wasn't acting. At this moment, alarm bells rang in my mind as my soul was rapidly being pulled away by the system. Ding! With a thud, I fell to the ground. The whole venue erupted in confusion, shouting, what's going on? Why did the girl suddenly faint? There's been an accident. Perhaps the tumultuous discussion made him feel embarrassed, and his face immediately turned cold. Estelle Severin, it's going too far to keep pretending to be fainted. He turned around and left without any hesitation. He had left like this without looking back many times before, and every time, I would immediately get up from the ground and chase after him. But this time, I couldn't wake up anymore. When I first arrived in this novel world, the system tasked me with capturing the heart of the second male lead in this book, Mason Ladner. He deeply loved the female lead, but couldn't be with her. His countless confessions were always defeated by the male lead's casual appearance. In the end, he sacrificed his own life to protect the female lead and fulfilled his love for her. Almost no reader could remain unmoved by his deep devotion. So, besides completing my mission, I also genuinely liked him. I wanted to save him, change his fate, and give him a love that was unique and the most special in the world. That's why, when he rejected my confession for the first time and turned away, I loudly said to him, Mason, I will become the most important person in your heart. I am certain of it. That's what I thought, and that's what I firmly believed. I did my best to treat him well, pursuing him earnestly and persistently, offering him my sincere love. But I forgot. His tenderness would always be reserved for his female lead. But I am not her. I regret so much. If I had only pursued him without genuinely falling in love, I wouldn't be so heartbroken now. My soul floated near Mason, unable to leave. The system said that the punishment for failure was that my soul would be imprisoned in this novel world for eternity. I saw Mason get in the car and tap the steering wheel a few times. It seemed like he was waiting for someone. After waiting for a while, his brows furrowed. He sneered, she's overestimating herself this time. I don't know who he was talking to. Then he started the engine and left without looking back. My soul followed him all the way to his bedroom. On the bedside table in his bedroom, there was a photo of him and Hazel Wade. Hazel Wade, the female lead of this novel, was also his unrequited love. He, someone who didn't like taking photos, could actually smile so happily in the picture. After Mason finished brushing his teeth, he just laid down on the bed and fell asleep when his phone rang with a ding. On the other end, Hazel's voice sounded urgent and tearful. Mason, Rufus is at the bar again, surrounded by other women. I saw Mason's hand clench tightly, and he whispered softly, don't worry, I'll help you. Then he changed his clothes, grabbed his car keys, and quickly drove off into the night. With a bang, the door was kicked open. The lively atmosphere in the private room suddenly became tense. Rufus Trainer looked at the silhouette backlit by the doorway and raised an eyebrow, the lickspit is here. Mason walked step by step towards him, his voice cold and deep, Hazel is waiting for you at home. Rufus sneered, no wonder they call you a lickspittle. What the hell does it have to do with you? Then he looked back and was surprised. Where's your follower today? Didn't she come with you? 
Mason's expression froze, and he said, It's none of your business. He spoke each word as if squeezing them out of his teeth. Rufus laughed and said, Why is it none of my business? Mason, I am quite interested in her. Since you don't like her, how about giving her to me? I before he could finish his sentence, Mason suddenly grabbed a beer bottle from the table and smashed it on Rufus's head. Mason glared at him, do you fucking dare to have thoughts about her? Rufus touched the blood on his head, stunned for a moment, then suddenly got up and tackled Mason to the ground, ruthlessly punching him. Rufus cursed, you say you don't like her, but you won't let others like her either. Don't be a hypocrite, I despise you. The two men fought back fiercely, making all the guests and hostesses in the private room flee in fear. Stop fighting! Suddenly, Hazel appeared at the door of the private room and shouted loudly. Mason paused and his hand stopped. But Rufus didn't stop, he delivered a powerful punch to Mason's abdomen. Mason became furious and raised his fist to strike back. Hazel suddenly stood in front of Rufus. Holding his fist and pleading, don't hit him, Mason, I'm begging you. In fact, Mason had a very stubborn and obstinate personality, and hardly anyone could persuade him. But as long as Hazel looked at him with those soft eyes, Mason would comply with her every wish. So at this moment, Mason's clenched fist tightened even more, but he slowly let it go. When he let go of his hand, he even gently touched Hazel's head. I floated in midair and chuckled self-deprecatingly. Facing Mason's retreating figure, Rufus suddenly said, Mason, you can continue fooling around, but the day she sees through you, she'll definitely kick you away. This she seemed to be referring to me. Mason turned his head slightly and said only one sentence. She will never leave me. Mason stood under the streetlight, hesitating to get on the car immediately. He simply opened his phone and tapped on our chat box, scrolling through it a few times. In the chat box, almost all the messages were sent by me, while Mason only replied occasionally. And throughout the whole day, I didn't send a single message. His brows furrowed repeatedly, and there was a rare annoyance in his eyes. Finally, he sent a message. Hmm, just a period. Putting down his phone, he began to wait confidently. However, after five minutes, he became impatient. Where are you? Aren't you going to sleep? Who said that even if you're asleep, you will still reply to my messages? But there was still no response in the chat box. He clenched his hand holding the phone tighter and tighter, then lifted his foot and kicked over the trash can on the roadside. He seemed very angry. At this moment, the phone rang with a beep. It was a voice call. His mood immediately calmed down, he smirked, and waited for two seconds before answering. Hello? Mason, will you come to Estelle's funeral? Through the phone, my best friend's voice was low and filled with sadness. As if not expecting it to be someone else's call, Mason's mouth drooped for a moment, but quickly coldly laughed. A funeral? Has she gone too far with her acting? She said that if I don't marry her, she will die. She wants marriage so much? She's using a funeral to force me? You! My best friend's tone suppressed anger. Next week, her body will be cremated by us. Even if you don't care, please don't disrespect her. The dead should be respected. Mason sneered, she's so lively, how could she possibly die? Seeming to have had enough, my best friend finally cursed, you're so despicable, why don't you go die? With a beep, she hung up the phone decisively. Mason frowned and realized that I didn't reply to any of the messages even after the call ended. He lifted his foot and kicked over the trash can on the roadside. Muttering to himself, let's see what trick you're playing. The next morning, Mason woke up and called out, Estelle. No response for a while. He got up and saw that there was no breakfast platter arranged by me on the table for the first time, and he froze again. He leaned on the table, as if thinking for a while, before remembering what my best friend said about me being dead. He sneered, good that she's dead, finally no one bothers me. In order to pursue him, to take better care of him, I deliberately rented a house next to him and managed to get his key. Every morning, I made breakfast for him and prepared his clothes for the day. I thought I was being considerate. But I didn't expect that Mason had always found it annoying. He stood up, opened the fridge, and took an egg. 
When he cracked the egg and fried it in the pan, he even had to read the instructions on how to turn on the stove. The egg rolled in the pan, but he couldn't control the force, and it was burnt after a while. He was a cooking idiot. Mason stood there, expressionless, slapped the pan and went to the bedroom to change clothes, then left the house. Without me helping him pick out clothes, the socks he wore were mismatched. Fortunately, they were hidden inside his suit pants, so the whole picture couldn't be seen. For the next few days, Mason was constantly angry at work. When he slapped the proposal document onto his manager's face and roared, haven't you eaten? I saw the manager's legs go weak as if he was about to fall down the next second. I don't know if the manager was mentally ill, but he actually trembled and asked, have you eaten? I thought Mason would kick him away, but unexpectedly, he remained silent for two seconds and said, not yet. The manager seemed to understand why Mason had been so abnormal these past two days. He trembled and asked, what do you want to eat? I'll have the cafeteria staff make it for you. Mason said, fried egg. Yes. The manager nodded and bowed. When he brought the fried egg over, he wiped the sweat from his forehead with a handkerchief, as if he thought he had escaped a disaster and let out a sigh of relief. But Mason only took a bite and smashed the plate onto the ground. With a furrowed brow, he said, this is not the taste. The manager's expression was desperate, but then, as if struck by inspiration, do you want me to ask Miss Severin to make it for you? Because I often pestered Mason, I was also familiar with the manager. Naturally, he knew me. There was a moment of silence in the air. Mason coldly said. Why do you want to call her? Will I die without her? The manager nodded with a bitter face. All right, I won't call her. Bending over, he was about to leave. With a bang, the ashtray hit the wall and shattered into pieces. The manager screamed in fright. Mason said, did I tell you to leave? His brows furrowed repeatedly, as if even angrier. Call her for me. Trembling, the manager took out his phone and dialed. He was extremely anxious. But there was only a long mechanical female voice in the phone. Hello, the number you dialed is powered off, please try again later. Mason's face turned terrifyingly ugly, and his right cheek twitched rapidly. Get out. In the end, that's all he said. Mason buried himself in work, his eyes now dark and swollen. It has been seven days since I disappeared. During these seven days, he worked tirelessly, as if burying himself in work could make him forget something. Every time he picked up his phone, he would first check our chat box. He pinned me to the top on the second day when I didn't reply to him. It's really strange. I used to dream of having my chat box pinned by him, and now I finally got it after I died. The phone suddenly rang, and this time it was Hazel. Mason, help me. Her voice was suppressed, mixed with trembling moans. Mason quickly realized that something was wrong and frowned, saying, send me your location, I'll be right there. As always, whenever Hazel said something, Mason would become a brave warrior and rush to her side. Mason pushed open the door and was furious at the scene before him. A man with a muscular body was pressing Hazel down, tearing at her clothes with an urgent and vulgar manner. Mason stepped forward, pulled him away forcefully, and kicked him several times until Hazel's trembling call brought him back to his senses. Mason. Mason's hands trembled as he lifted her up. He noticed the abnormal flush on Hazel's face and his expression changed. Sure enough, Hazel moaned, I've been drugged. He anxiously said, I'll take you to the hospital. Hold on.